Shelly Paneer, bless your heart. You come and take your time and minister and uh, give her a good hand. God bless you this morning. Amen. What a joy and an honor to be here. I haven't seen my brother Bill since faith camp days. That was youth camp. And um, he and his brothers were there. We used to call them the Muscle Brothers. And um, they were... They were warriors for God, and I just so, and still are, that's right, and we just, our lives were so touched, and we were so impacted as young people for God, and I have been in the ministry all of my life, and those were the days that the Holy Spirit really made himself real to me, and I thank you, and I honor you today for your service to the Lord, and for your dedication, and you're still going, man. And I appreciate what God has done through you and how he's used you. And you've touched my life and my, my sister and my brother and so many of the young people that were there during those days. We had some Holy Ghost times. Oh, yeah. And how many of you know the youth of today, they're looking for something that's real. They know when it's real and when it's fake. And when someone like this man comes along and they sit back and can actually feel the tangible presence of God... That changes your life. That touches your life in a way that you don't forget. And I never forgot that. And I never had to go out into the world to find myself and taste and eat of the things of the world and experience things that would destroy my life because I didn't know who I was. No, the Holy Ghost showed me who He was. And I found my identity in Him. So I didn't have to go out there figure it out and that's you know I appreciate testimonies of people who have been saved and come out of drugs and all those things and all the things that that Jesus can deliver you from but how many of you know his keeping power is just as great as his delivering power his saving power so I I feel like I'm, I'm one of God's little trophies as we all are and we and I can just stand up and say you know God has been so good to me he's kept me and I, and I appreciate so much what the Lord has done for me. I was raised in church my whole life. I've been in the ministry since I was a little girl. Uh, and I've ministered with Dr. Fred Price for, some of you may know me from Crenshaw Christian Center. I led worship for him for about eight years. And then I moved to Michigan and I was with Bishop Keith Butler for about eight years. And so I've been in ministry, full-time ministry, my whole life. Uh, and sometimes when you're in the church you can become a little bit tunnel visioned and just see what's going on in your little church world. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Well, I, I was really praying about what I should share with you today. And I really felt like the Lord led me in my heart to share an experience that I had that was probably one of the most amazing and impactful experiences of my life when it comes to soul winning because we're all here about today this is a soul winning That's seminar right. amen so let me just share with you something that happened to me that kind of blew my little uh religious mind <laughs> i love it when god does things like that don't you i was going to have dinner uh at a restaurant with some friends one night in san juan capistrano out here and uh, I got there a little bit early and my friends were late. And one of my friends happened to show up and we were still waiting on the third one. And so we're in the lobby area and the restaurant is off to one side and the bar lounge is off to the other side. So we're waiting in the lobby area and I hear the music and the band playing and somebody singing in the lounge area. And uh, then the music stops and the gentleman comes through the little, the little lobby area and he recognizes my friend that I'm with. And they know each other. And he was the singer. And my friend was a singer as well. And so they stopped and greeted each other. Hey, how you doing? The whole thing. And I'm standing there. So they introduced, and my friend introduces me to the singer that was in the bar that night. And he says, oh, nice to meet you. And my friend said, yeah, Shelly, she's a gospel singer. He said, oh, really? My friend said, yeah, yeah. And he said, well, why don't you come into the bar you know, when I get back on my break, come in and sing a song for us. And in my mind, I thought, absolutely not. You know, I'm a church girl. I'm not going in the bar, and I'm not going to go in there and sing. And out of my mouth came these words, sure. <laughs> I was like, who said that? <laughs> Have you ever had a who said that moment? <laughs> 
So I stood there and I thought, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? So he said, okay, come over here. I want to introduce you to the keyboard player. Now this guy is bad. He can pick up anything you can sing. There's a little rehearsal room in the back. You can go back there and you guys can work something out. Sing whatever you want and he'll accompany you. And I was like, okay. So I walked back there and I walked through this bar. Now I'm the little church girl, right? I've been in church my whole life. I don't go to bars. I don't go in places like that, <laughs> right? So I walk through this bar. I go in the back room and I think to myself, what am I going to sing in here? I, I, I just, I couldn't even think of anything. I mean, one thing popped into my head that I was just crazy at the moment, and I thought, crazy. <laughs> Should I sing that? <laughs> no, so the next thing I know, I, 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 I think of this song, and I start, I start to sing this very simple melody to this keyboard player. Now, this guy has worked with Michael Jackson. He's done studio stuff with Sting and all these people, right? He's supposed to be a bad keyboard player. But I sing this very simple melody, and he can't pick it up. It was a train wreck. And I thought, what is going on? He's stumbling all over the place, and he says, you know what, I just, I, I, I can't get it. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. And, I, and so uh, the, the uh, singer came back, and he says, did you guys work something out? And I said, well, no, not really. And I said, but you know what, I'll just sing something a cappella. I thought, well, who said that? <laughs> you know that Holy Ghost, right? And so I thought, oh gosh, what am I, what am I doing? And so he goes, all right, I'm going to come out. I'll open up with a, a little medley I'm going to do. And then after that, you can, I'll introduce you and you get up and sing. So I thought, okay. So we go out and I'm sitting out there listening to this guy sing. And, uh, he, he was just doing some, some jazz kind of song. And I look around the room. And it's, it's a bar and it's a lounge. There are tables and people are seated. But there is not a dance floor. There's no dancing. It's not that kind of a place. But I look and in the back of the room, there's one girl that's real special in the back of the room dancing all by herself. And she is just absolutely as drunk as she could be. And she's floating around back there making noise and dancing and everyone is making fun of her. And they're looking back and laughing at her, but she didn't care. I mean, I, I personally, she was having a party all by herself when I looked at her, just dancing and singing and having a good time. And I thought, well, I don't know for sure what this is going to be like for me to sing a cappella when she's trying to accompany from the, me from the back of the room, but we'll see what happens. So the gentleman uh, finished singing his song, and then he introduced me, and he said, uh, this, this gal is a gospel singer, and she's going to get up and come and sing a song for us. Well, how many of you know people are there, they're there to smoke and drink and have a good time, and they're not coming to church, right? But... I knew that God had me there for a reason, although I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. I knew it was going to be something, though, because how many of you know the footsteps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord? So I got up there and I said, uh, hi, I, I, I'd like to just sing a, a gospel song for you. Now, let me tell you something. I was out of my element that night. I wasn't in church. I didn't have a great piano player accompanying me. I didn't have background music. I didn't have the choir or the praise team. I didn't have a congregation that was ready to press in and worship God with me. I was out of my element completely. But sometimes, those are the times when God can use Come you on. the most. It's so not about us. It's about our availability to him and his plan, which is so much bigger than our plan. He sees beyond our little boundaries and our little walls that we sometimes try to lock him into. And so I stood up there and my heart, <laughs> I was so nervous, Brother Bill, because I wasn't used to a scenario like this. I'd sang in Madison Square Garden in front of crowds of thousands and not been nervous, but I was terrified that wow. night. Yeah. So I stood up there and I said, Jesus, use me. 
and I closed my eyes and I began to sing. If the ship of your life is tossing on the sea of strife, you need someone. And if you feel so all alone and your house is not a home, then you And if you feel life isn't fair And there is no one left to share All those lonely days and nights When things just won't turn out right And you need someone to care and someone to just be there I know that someone that you need so I give you Jesus He is perfect love. He casts out all fear. I give you Jesus. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's the water that you drink and never thirst. You'll never thirst again. My friends, I give you Jesus. And as I was singing, about halfway through the chorus, the piano behind me began to play, the keyboard. And I turned around to look to see who was playing for me, and it was the girl who had been drunk in the back of the room. As I looked at her face, tears were streaming down her face. She played that song so perfectly and beautifully. I did the second chorus, and, and a verse again, and then a chorus again. And, and the anointing of God fell in that bar stronger than any church service I have been in. Yeah. Up to that point in my life. And when I finished singing, I opened my eyes and grown men and women were sobbing wow. in wow. the bar Jesus. while I sang about Jesus yes. to a crowd of people who had no idea that that night they had an encounter planned with the Almighty. Hallelujah. That girl came up to me after we were done and she threw her arms around me and she fell on my shoulder. She almost collapsed. And she sobbed uncontrollably for about five minutes. And I just held her. I had no idea what her story was. But I knew that God had done something amazing that night. When she let go of me, she stood back and looked at me and she said, Who are you and where are you from and how do you know that song? And I said, I'm Shelly from Torrance, California. I know it from church. <laughs> and she said, I said, how do you know it? She said, from church. She said, my daddy is a preacher. And I haven't set foot in church in five years. I've been running from God. I've been mad at God, and I've been through some things that have hurt me. And she said, I didn't even know if he loved me anymore. Jesus. She said, but tonight, you were here, 
And God showed me that no matter how far I run, oh, yeah. I can't outrun his love for me. Hallelujah. He will find me wherever I am. And you know something? I learned a really good lesson that night. It's not about me. It's not about my reputation. What if somebody sees me here in this bar? I mean, I've done my best to to live a straight life and be honorable and, and be godly. And, and, and I've got a reputation to uphold. You know, I'm a minister. If I'm in a bar, somebody, you know what? Jesus made himself of no reputation. Who are we to even care what man thinks about us? What people's opinion is. I've been delivered of public opinion. I don't care what anybody thinks. It's what he thinks about me. And you know what? For that one person, God sent me there to do something that night for him. Have you ever heard somebody say that was an aha moment in my life? Uh -huh. That wasn't just an aha moment for me. That was an oh yeah moment. Oh, yeah. 